so let us now discuss experiment number three experiment number three according to your neat syllabus says that we need to understand the dissipation of energy dissipation of energy of an oscillation so oscillation for what for simple pendulum and this is the graph between the square of amplitude and time I hope you are already you already know the difference the basic meanings of you know the amplitude the time period everything these things uh, I'm assuming that you already know the thing you need to learn here is damned oscillation so basic theory first of all we'll talk about the basic theory and then we'll go to the procedure and all so basically what happens is when the simple pendulum oscillates so when you oscillate the bob of the simple pendulum its energy is dissipated this energy is lost due to air resistance this is the basic theory so when the simple pendulum oscillates its energy is lost and hence its amplitude decreases that is the main thing so as you already know the energy of oscillation is total energy of SHM or oscillation is given by A square. So exactly if you see E is proportional to A square. So indirectly why are we making the graph of A square versus time? Indirectly we are not making the graph of A square versus time. We are making the graph of energy versus time. So A square, the square of amplitude is basically the energy, the total energy of SHM. So you are making, you are from this experiment, you are finding how the energy of this SHM decreases or varies because of the air resistance. So first of all, whenever these kind of, these oscillations are called as are called as damned oscillations all right what is damping here the energy the amplitude is getting reduced to zero so these oscillations where the energy the amplitude keeps reduces reduces these oscillations are called as remember the word damned oscillations now why the energy gets reduces we need to see so basically what happens is you know in any SHM the force is equal to minus kx this is the restoring force this is the force present in every oscillation which causes the oscillation this is the cause of the oscillation but in damned oscillation there is one more force which is minus bv this is called as resistive force or dissipative force or air resistance so basically when that bob bob that ball moves in the air the molecules of air or due to the viscosity of air the force on that ball is opposite to its velocity and proportional to its velocity 
it is always support it always dissipates the energy and because it dissipates the energy the total energy of shm keeps decreasing keeps decreasing until it stops so this is how basically now this is the exact different uh, equation force equation for a damped oscillation remember we are talking about this the damped oscillation only now you don't have to worry about what we call this b because uh, these are in detail this is basic mass i just want to make a point here that in differential equation when you write uh, the equation of shm there will be one more term like v if you write f this is m into a will be equal to minus kx will be equal to uh, minus bv if you write everything in differential form it becomes m into d2x by dt square plus b times v can be written as dx by dt plus kx equal to 0 this is the differential equation for a damped oscillation right we also have a name for it this is called as damping constant I don't worry about this term just try to understand this kind of equation where you will have also one more extra term in differential equation this is the example of damped oscillations now third third point so in damped oscillation the total energy of the system gets dissipated in the form of energy so that is the what expression that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to write the expression, the exact expression, how does mathematically the energy dissipates and then we will talk about the experiment. So in damped oscillations, both energy and amplitude of SHM decreases exponentially. This is an important thing to learn here. It means what I'm trying to say, the energy of SHM, exactly I'm writing the, the thing, is E naught is the initial energy into E raised to power minus exact formula is B by M into T. Sorry, this is not B by M, this is B by 2M into T. Right? So energy is E naught into E raised power minus B by M into T. And the amplitude is A naught into E raised power minus B by 2M into T. This is how the energy exactly varies in a damped oscillation. You can clearly see it is an exponential form. And you can go from here to here by square. As you know, you can always write E is equal to half K A square. So if you square this term, you will get this term. Both are, the, both are exponentially decreasing. You need to understand this right so we are most uh, we are basically and uh, in this particular experiment we are not interested in these constants of course i can write this this is called as damping coefficient b by m is basically damping coefficient but don't worry its unit is per second second inverse or 1 by a second but we are not interested in writing b by m here i am just trying to see that the x the function is exponential and it is decreasing the energy function right that is more important thing all right <clears throat> so basically when you draw the graphs of this energy versus time the energy versus time it should go exponential decreasing it should start from some e naught value and then it should decrease exponentially that is what i am talking about and it is same as either you write e or you write the graph of a square don't worry about the constants the graph of a square versus t or e versus t are one and the same things all right now we would of course interested to know when the energy will be halved 
these kind of questions may come in your exam when the this is time t equal to zero at what time the energy is halved so i think for that we should write the relation we should see the relation again so we have e is equal to e naught e raised to the power minus b by m into t we can rewrite this as a <coughs> if you see this is a e by e naught will be equal to or you can rewrite it as a e by e naught is equal to e raised to the power minus b by m into t just inverse e naught by e will be equal to e raised to the power b by m into t now take log on both sides if two things are equal then their log ln's are also equal so if i take log on both side this will come ln e not by e will be equal to b by m. and ln and e gets cancelled out it becomes b by m into t now this is the result you can remember b by m is some constant which is unit per second remember so what is t t is the time and what is e not e not is the initial energy this is the initial energy and this e is the energy after time t time t so basically from e not to e it will take time t that is the standard result and now as we have we can also rewrite this as my dear as ln of a not square divided by a square will be equal to b by m into t that is what i am saying because you cannot observe energy you can ob only observe amplitude so by observing amplitude you can write the time at what time the amplitude becomes half or 1 by root 2 you can use this equation directly so this is the basic math behind the damped oscillation two three two three more points let's write just fourth the frequency of the angular frequency of natural oscillation so without damping omega is under root k by m remember so when there is no damping the frequency omega is under root k by m but the frequency of damped oscillation omega damped is slightly less than omega not this is also called as omega not natural frequency but damped oscillations have slightly lesser frequency the exact value you don't need to remember just i am writing so that all these things are i have taken from the ncert the old ncert so for damped oscillations the energy the frequency will be slightly lesser so the time period of damped oscillation will be slightly higher remember this is the natural without damping so if you start damping this oscillation its frequency decreases slightly the exact expression you don't need to remember just keep this thing in your mind the frequency of damped oscillation is slightly smaller than the natural frequency all right and the last point we add to this thing is in the theory is uh the displacement x is equal to as you know a sin omega t but here you write a e raised to the power minus b by 2m into t this is the amplitude into sin of omega damped into t so this is the equation of shm for damped oscillation oscillation or displacement for damped oscillation just remember this is the displacement 
this is the amplitude and this is of course the frequency and all. So I hope you understood the concept. The basic theory behind the damped oscillation, it's very simple. The energy dissipation of simple pendulum is an example of damped oscillation. The first thing in damped oscillation, the both energy and amplitude decrease exponentially. And as we know, energy and square of amplitude are mathematically are one and the same thing. So basically the graph which we are plotting experimentally is a square of amplitude versus time is same as the variation of energy of that the total energy of pendulum versus time graph and it should it should it should be uh, exponentially decreasing graph as we have seen in the theory right the third thing here to remember is the energy dissipating force is the the uh, viscous force or the air viscous force or the air friction which dissipates the energy which always acts opposite to the motion of the bob so i hope you understood the basic concept now we'll discuss the things. This is the example. I, I suggest you should remember the variation of energy, this function, exponential decreasing. And I think the question might come to find out the time. They may ask you if it takes uh, 10 oscillations or 10 seconds to reduce its amplitude from a, uh, 0 to a by 2, then how much time it will it take to reduce from a by 2 to a by 4? These kind of questions, which were earlier like radioactivity, radioactive nuclear radioactivity type of questions may come from this part in your exam. So, so this formula will be directly helpful to you just from the uh, amplitudes we can find the time right we'll solve many questions on these don't worry and the uh, the frequency of course decreases slightly and this thing so this is the basic theory of uh, damped oscillation of simple pendulum